During an emergency, you don't have a lot of time to think about what to do. That's why departure briefings are so important, and we're talking about them today in the hangar. Welcome to In The Hangar, I'm Christy Wong. Today's episode is brought to you by Wingfield Aviation. We're here with Josh Flowers and Martin Pauly to discuss departure briefings. Glad to be back. All right, well thank you guys so much for coming. Why don't we just jump right into it. Martin, what is a departure briefing and why should we care? A departure briefing is a, uh, a brief a check or, or plan of what to do just before you take the runway, what to do if something goes horribly wrong uh, during or shortly after takeoff. And in the planes that we typically fly, the most likely thing to happen is an engine failure. Uh, so you, it's not very long, you spend 15 or 20 seconds just uh, thinking or better yet saying out loud what might happen and what the first thing is that you are going to do and it prepares you mentally for that situation so that in that moment of shock and terror with a big rush of adrenaline, you have somewhere to start. You, you, you have uh, some recent training, if you will, that will help you in that moment. Okay, because we have to prepare for the human factor, right? Right, and the human factor is very real. Mental preparedness is the most important thing when it comes to a, a departure brief, or, or a pre-departure brief is really what it is. Um, and I think it's really important because not very many people do it. It's not really taught very much in flight schools. CFIs don't really teach their students to brief what's gonna happen if this engine fails especially when you only have one, you know, like that's kind of important to, to be mentally ready for it. Um, and a good exercise to kind of just see what the effect is with the human factor. Generally, it'll take you like three or four seconds to realize what happened if the engine fails on, you know, on takeoff because your, mind, your mind's preoccupied with other things. Next time you're on climb out, just pull your power to idle and count to four and see how fast your speed decays. It's super, super important that we're ready for that and almost like listening for the engine to cough or something. Um, on takeoff. So when I brief uh, my departure, it's actually abort plan ready is at the bottom of my pre-takeoff checklist. So I'm, I do it every single time and I verbally do it whether I'm alone or with somebody. So um, give me an example of what you say. So I always say I, I do it in three phases and I've got to give Dan Greider a lot of credit for this because he's kind of, he's talked to me a lot about uh, this whole movement that he's got going on. He's done some stuff with flight chops on YouTube. I'm sure a lot of people have seen that. Yeah, we flew with him. Uh, right. Y'all yeah. just flew with him and I uh, just recently met up with him and him and I have got a project coming up here pretty soon. But uh, it's all centered around this whole grassroots movement that he's getting at about just flying the airplane and maintaining control of the airplane. <clears throat> and there's a lot that goes into that. But I brief my, uh, my departure in three phases. I say the engine is going to fail on this departure. And that'll freak somebody out for the most part. They'll be like, what, what are you talking about? But uh, you got to mentally prepare for this engine to fail. It's going to happen in one of three phases. It's either going to happen before we rotate, after we rotate, before we're at a safe altitude, and then after we're at a safe altitude. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of which one of those three phases is it, it going to happen. If it's before rotation, I tell myself I'm chopping the power and getting on the brakes. Period. We're, we're, yeah. we're aborting the takeoff. If, if it happens after rotation and I, before what I usually call a thousand feet in a 172, uh, we're going to be spring loaded on the yoke to push the nose down. I mean, just uh, almost aggressively push the nose down and maintain that airspeed. Keep the airspeed up and keep control of the airplane is the number one thing. And in the words of Bob Hoover, fly the airplane as far into the crash as possible. Because um, losing control is the one thing that'll be sure to make it fatal. Right. And then, of course, after the, uh, after the safe altitude threshold, 1,000 feet, then I say, okay, then I can entertain a turn back to the airport or to another field. Before that, below a safe altitude, it's plus or minus 30 degrees. I'm putting it down in front of me no matter what. And I always brief it on every single takeoff, regardless of what airplane I'm in, whether I'm alone or not, whether cameras are rolling or not. It okay. doesn't matter. So here's a question for you. I have a friend of mine whose husband is a pilot, mm -hmm. and she came to me recently because she was like super freaked out that mm -hmm. her husband was doing these pre-departure briefings, and she was like, Christy, he keeps saying that the engine's going to quit, and it's freaking me out, and I want him to stop. And mm -hmm. uh, what would you say to that person? Why do you wear a seatbelt in the car? 
Right, but we don't verbalize that we're wearing the seatbelt, I guess. Right. That, that's her thing. I she, normally don't. Right. She she didn't want to, I guess her her problem was that she didn't want to imagine that the air, you know, that the airplane was going to quit working or that right. something bad was going to happen, and it really freaked her out. So how can we put our passengers more at ease? Well, you can explain to them mm -hmm. that the alternative is if, if you don't go through this just before takeoff, that it won't be there when you need it in mm -hmm. your mind at right. that moment. We, we refresh our memory uh, with what the plan is. You know, maybe while we're doing it, we can, we can touch the controls so that we have that muscle memory really fresh. And of course, 99.99% of the time we don't need it, but it will make the difference in that rare moment when the engine does really quit. Right. Yeah, yeah you, most of the time you're not going to need it. And of course, I'm not going to say to a brand new passenger, we are going to lose the engine on this takeoff. Right. But rest assured, I said it in my head like eight times. You know, I, I'm mentally preparing myself for that to happen. And my eyes are popping over to the engine monitor on the climb and making sure the cylinders are not, you know, one's not running away and I'm listening. And I'm basically spring loaded to put the nose down and put the airplane down. Uh, but like you just said, 99.9% .9 of the time, you don't need it. Yeah. But it's, it's a precaution that we take. And we as pilots are very procedure oriented. We love checklists. Well, most of us should at least. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, we're, we're very, we like to be prepared and kind of verbalize those kind of things. So that's why we do yeah. it. So Martin, you recently did a video on departure briefings. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I, uh, I, I did that shortly after I started doing departure briefings. Uh, I've been flying for a long time, and like Josh mentioned earlier, um, we, we don't always train this to, uh, to students. Um, and it wasn't until I flew with an instructor for, for some multi-engine uh, training who impressed upon me the importance and, uh, and taught me the, the, the structure. And the motivation he gave is, uh, if I may quote him here, he said, you know, when something happens, pilots will often say, you know, we rise to the occasion. And you say that is just completely wrong. Pilots don't rise to the occasion. They sink to the lowest level of recent training. And the, so the better the training is, the more recent that training was, mm -hmm. the, the better. And the departure briefing is a way to, to do a little bit of recurrent training just before the flight. So I turned that into a video showing you know, why is it important, um, and, and how do you do it? You know, it's one thing to just tell pilots do a departure brief. Okay, what do I actually say? So I, I go through a few examples, and it's very similar to the structure that, uh, that Josh mentioned. Okay, so in addition to the climb out and then pulling back your engine for four seconds, what else would you guys recommend pilots can do to really prepare for that, you know, unlikely emergency that may or may not happen? Um, I mean, it, it helps to, you know, fly with an, in, with an instructor or maybe even just another friend who's a pilot that can surprise you by chopping the power. You know, you can sit there all day long and pull your own power to idle and put the airplane into a glide and stuff, but you're expecting it, obviously. Right. So it's the, it's the whole element of surprise thing and, you know, getting that muscle memory of you hear the engine quit, don't pull, don't sit there and stare at the panel for a second. It's like, it, it, you know, make it a habit. Have that audible cue of the engine drone going down and you push. Like make it muscle memory. I think that is probably one of the most important things. And I'm talking about loss of control here, like on right. takeoff and stuff. Um, because we're, since we're talking about departure briefings, I think that's where the situation can get most dangerous is loss of power on takeoff. So getting that muscle memory and turning it into a habit is really important. Habits are very powerful and we use them every single day and every little thing that we do. So kind of taking those habits and knowing how to manipulate your habits into instead of you hear the engine quit, oh no, what happened? The first thing you need to do is push the nose down and fly the airplane. Keep your airspeed up. Because without your airspeed, all everything else is out the window. Right. Doesn't matter. Exactly. And the briefing doesn't have to, you know, cover the next fifteen steps or so. You know, the, right. the first two things maybe that you have to do mm -hmm. are important. And and the fact that you do the briefing in my opinion, is more important than what you actually say right. during the briefing. Um, he, here's why. There was a recent episode here at, uh, in the hangar with um, Pat Brown from AOPA. We had talked about losing the engine in a Citabri, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And as he recalled what happened, he described how for about 10 seconds he did not know what to do. He was in disbelief, right? And no, this can't be happening to me. And um, 
we need a strategy before we take off, before we advance the throttle, of how to deal with that. Yeah. And the departure briefing is that strategy. Mm -hmm. With every step that we execute during the briefing, our brain starts working again, countering the effect of the adrenaline. And, uh, and then it'll, it'll all be easier. Right. But we need, we need a plan for this first, the, the first one or two things to do. Uh, and that's what the departure briefing does. Disbelief is a fantastic word to associate with the human factor there. That's where that deadly delay comes from, is mm -hmm. as soon as you hear the engine quit, you're like, no, this isn't happening to me, no. You know, and you sit there for a second, and you have to think about the fact that your engine just quit, and meanwhile, your airspeed decays to a, a fatal stall speed, and now you're you're in a very dangerous situation. And how many videos have we seen, surveillance cameras and stuff, where the airplane, you know, the, the pilot just inadvertently pulls back and the airplane goes into a stall spin? It's, it's happening at a ridiculous rate. And I think, I think having an effective departure briefing that is a, it's, it becomes a habit. Mm -hmm. And it, it maybe even, it, it doesn't even have to become a habit because we have checklists. And if you make doing a checklist a habit and it's on your checklist, then you're not going to miss it. You're going to do it every single time. I've, I haven't failed to do a departure briefing in a few years now because I'm so religious about checklists. Mm -hmm. I will not leave the ground without doing that checklist, and it, it guarantees that I'm going to do it. And it puts you in, that, in the mental space that, I mean, when I take off if between the ground and 1,500 feet AGL, all I'm thinking about is an engine failure. And I find that it almost puts me at ease a little bit. It, and that kind of sounds weird, but it puts me at ease a bit knowing that I, it's at the forefront of my mind and I'm ready for it. And I'm like every second I'm thinking about pushing the nose down. Now, just to be clear, during an emergency like that, say from the, when you first take off to 1,500 mm -hmm. feet, you're not necessarily talking about reaching over, grabbing a checklist and going through it. You want to have like a flow, basically. No, it's muscle memory. I mean, yeah, I, a flow. Especially at low altitude, I'm not going to pull out a checklist and run it. Exactly. I'm the airplane down. Right, yeah. exactly. So, I mean, you want to have... Right. A plan of action, that muscle memory, something to go to that'll overcome that human factor of, oh, no, what's going on? This mm -hmm. isn't happening. Right. Just do it. Get the airplane on the ground. Right. right. And, that, and that's the, what I'm talking about, the kind of habit formation there of noticing the cue of the engine noise changing and the, the reaction is push the nose down. And I think that's super important. So then you don't even have to think about it. It's not a checklist item. Yeah. It's not, you don't have to think about, oh, I just lost my engine. What should I do now? Oh, let's put the nose down. Uh, it should happen in an instant. Yeah. And one additional step then is, uh, you know, if that happens, say the airport is just behind you, do I try to turn around or do I land straight ahead, right? How, how high do I need to be? Those are great questions to mm -hmm. ask, but you will not be able to answer them right. in that right. moment of surprise. You have to figure out ahead of time, okay, if my altimeter says, you know, 2,000 or more, uh, then I can try to, to right. turn around. Otherwise, I will just learn to a place forward mm -hmm. of the wings into the wind. Yeah, you just have to make have that to. decision right. before you take the runway. Awesome. Make it a rule for yourself and adhere to that. Yes. Great. Was there anything else that you guys want to add to this? I don't think so. It takes almost, it takes, only takes a few seconds, but it really only works if you do it before every takeoff religiously. Right. Um, how important are like flight service uh, departure briefings? I think, I, I mean, what you're going to get from flight service is more in terms of, of weather and kind of what you're, what you're to expect once you get out there. And that's, I mean, along the same lines, it's not necessarily talking about loss of control, but that's also, I mean, that has to do with um, what you're going to expect on your route further into the flight. And just like we, we have talked about on other occasions about busy airports and doing your homework and looking at the charts and stuff before you get into the plane and, and all that, it's much easier to get those briefings and get that information in your head before you get in the plane. Because once you start that engine, like half your brain capacity goes away because <laughs> you're, you're worrying about other stuff. So I think they're incredibly important, just like getting a weather briefing, whether you like, you know, get it on the phone or pull it through for flight. In, a, in text form or whatever it may be, super exactly. important. Again, it's about knowing what it's to expect. It's a briefing. Mm -hmm. It's a briefing. That's exactly right. Yeah, the different kinds of briefings. You know, another one will be if you fly an instrument departure, mm -hmm. you want to brief that instrument departure before you take off. Mm -hmm. uh, they fly this heading, this purposes. altitude, et cetera. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Starting the engine reduces your brain capacity, and then taking off into the air reduces your brain capacity even more, as we all know. Then, of course, the brain disconnect button, push to talk. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, I really Absolutely. appreciate the information. It's very, very helpful. And we'll put a link to your video up as well so people thank can you. refer appreciate back it. to it.
All right, well, now you know. It's really important to know what to expect uh, in all phases of flight, but especially on that departure. Make sure you're doing your departure briefing and do one that's effective for you. Like, subscribe, and share, and uh, next time uh, we'll see you in the hangar.